get there and then suddenly it all disappears. Uh, we'll try and get Slav back on a, a, a decent line as soon as we can. Uh, this is something that uh, all different kinds of ways of, of talking about it and seeing it. Uh, some people refer to it as astral pro projection. This idea that people uh, who are either sort of, if I can put it this way, between life and death, or for some people, when if, if they're meditating or if they're under hypnosis, their bodies can travel from within their bodies to outside their bodies and look down upon themselves. Research claims, and how do you research this, but research claims somewhere between 8 and 20% of people have experienced this. That's one in, I mean, if we go for the big number, one in five. If we go for the, the smaller number, one in 12 or so have experienced this. We've got Slav back on the phone, hopefully. Slav, hopefully we can hear you this morning. Good morning. Oh, yeah, that's much better. Good yeah, morning. Yeah, excellent. Okay. Yeah, very well, thanks. Tell us what happened to you then. Um, so, yeah, it was one of them experiences that you don't want to really repeat, you know. Um, but I just suddenly got, got well, ill. Um, and a couple, couple of hours later, I ended up in the, uh, in the hospital diagnosed with sepsis. Josh, so you were taken in with sepsis, and then what happened? Um, so once I got uh, um, referred to a critical unit, um, doctors uh, blessed them seriously. The NHS uh, in Stoke Hospital, they they just amazing. It was like like watching one of those movies. Everything was just smooth and perfect. <clears throat> so anyway, um, they diagnosed me with sepsis and. Uh, and that's where the fight really started. Uh, obviously, for me, everything is blurry, and I get these flashbacks. Uh, some some of the things I remember, some of the things it's uh, what my wife told me after talking to doctors. Um, I guess what we want to talk today about is this uh, this weird uh, out of body experience. Mm, so you're you're very very ill. I mean, did your heart stop at any point? Were, were you were being resuscitated and so on? Yeah, so basically, so my body was shutting down uh, organ by organ. It started with stomach and kidneys, and then it went on. And uh, at some point, they had to bring me to life because my heart just, just stopped and my blood pressure and everything. I don't know how long it was. I never spoke to doctors, you know. Uh, once I left the hospital, I tried not to uh, go back to, the, back to this moment very often. Um, but what my, my wife told me after consulting doctors um, um, is what they, they actually brought me to life twice within first two or three days, uh, the initial fight for life. <clears throat> um, and that's where I experienced what I experienced. I, I didn't, first I thought it might be, you know, the drugs, because I had lots of drugs pumped into my body, adrenaline, adrenaline, and all the stuff I don't even know names of. So I thought, oh, maybe that was just a <clears throat> kind of like, you know, a, a high or vision. Yeah, when, kind of hallucination or something. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it was, you know, the first six, seven days and the, and the critical critical care, it, it was like that. It was like going, coming through between two different dimensions. But this certain experience, it, it was weird because I, I was literally talking to myself and it, it ended up kind of, uh, <clears throat> I got calm and I just made the peace with the situation and, and I, I, I thought, say, you know, thought in my head that, oh, okay, if, if it's the end, it's the end. At least I, li I lived the life that I wanted, really. Um, so I seen myself basically. <clears throat> it was an isolation room, um, so a small room. But I seen myself, and the room was much, much bigger, longer. So I was hold, I was floating against the wall, and seeing myself from the side, lying on the bed. I was talking to myself, just, just. Just calm down, take it easy. There's all these people here looking after you. Stop moaning, stop complaining. Don't want to. If I want to go home in my head and stuff like that. But this very moment, it didn't last long. And then I, I still don't know if how much drugs had to do with it. But then hearing my wife saying the doctors brought me to life, uh, I think it wasn't coincidence. Um, but it was very weird, you know, watching yourself. Uh, and everything just made sense suddenly. Everything was like, okay, um, that's me done. Uh, just stay calm and, you know, I'll probably even smile, I don't know. And, it's, you know, talking about this, even though it was a year ago, <clears throat> it's um, very emotional. 
I, I can imagine. So, where were you in the? Where were you looking at yourself from? Uh, were, were you sort of? Uh, did you have a high vantage point? The things I've read about this in the past suggest that people are kind of up near ceilings or or have much more of an overview than you would get if you stood up next to yourself. For yeah. Example. So, 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 what, so basically, um, our room extended, like so, it was longer. Okay. Um, so instead of being, I don't know, three meters, it would, and then I was kind of floating against the wall on one side, and then me on the bed was like in this extended room at the other end, and I see myself on this machine dipping, and and, um, and me just lying there and being very not not calm, and I was talking to myself from from being this thing on the wall. I was talking to this body on the bed. Is it so, something yeah. you've looked into since? Because, yeah, I, I've just done a bit of reading around it and it's something I'd heard about in the past. And it's it's not as uncommon as you might imagine from what I've read. People do, experience, some people do experience this. You see, I, I, I never did. It's like, it's what I said. It's once, I, um, once I survived this um, and I got back home after several weeks in the hospitals, um, I, I just try to erase it from my from my from my memory, and obviously, it's it's interesting experience. Uh, but then, I don't know I don't know how much drugs had to do with it, and how much just being there and, and surviving it, experience experiencing it. Uh, but I never did no no I never did no research. Um, it is somewhere there in my head that this happened. Um, but yeah, never done research, never read about it. You know, just. Has your experience changed the way you now live? Um, so before before all this, I, I, I lived a, a good life. I think um, I was I was healthy. I, you know, fitness was my my life. I, I'm a dad of two as well, so I was a good 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 father. Um, it's not like you see in the movie that suddenly you uh, you found yourself and and everything changes. But I can tell that even though before I would appreciate a lot of things, you know, from simple things like flowering trees um, to birds to, to animals or nature it, um, altogether. But I think I got more, I'm, I'm more aware of these things and I appreciate those things deeper on a deeper level now. Um, so I'm trying to stop, pause for a second and just soak in whatever happening around me instead of just just chasing the day and, and thinking about tomorrow. So this uh, and this this really this really helped, and also surviving this and and it made me really mentally stronger. Even though to start with I was suffering with PTSD and depression, and anxieties, I had panic attacks. I, I never had that before. Not no panic attacks. I had anxiety, but I think that made me um, as the moons passing by. That really that experience gave me this extra strength. Uh, and I'm, 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 you know, back on track. I'm, I'm back to my fitness. Uh, I'm doing events, spend time with kids. We're taking them out as much as we can, and you know, just, just appreciating everything now more. I think there's a lesson for us all to learn from that, isn't there? We should all appreciate mm -hmm. things a little bit more. Slav, it's lovely, uh, A, to be able to speak to you about it, given what's happened, uh, that, that you pulled through and you're here to tell the tale. Uh, and thanks so much for sharing it. I know it's difficult, but, but it is, I, I think, fascinating. Take care. Lovely Thank to talk to you this morning. Yeah, um, have a good day. And you, thanks very much for your time. It, it, it's, I mean, it's, it's the weirdest question to ask on the radio, I suppose, but have you ever died? I mean, that, that's kind of where we're at here. Heart stopped for a period of time. Been in the resuscitation room. Brought back to life again. Been on a defibrillator. Um, been pumped full of drugs in order that you can be resuscitated and so on. And if that's the case, uh, did you have this thing, this out-of-body experience that Slav Wojcik from Stafford says he did. 0800 121 80 I'm fascinated by this because I, I think, you know, we know so much about uh, who we are, where we are, how we function and so on. Uh, science has taught us an awful lot, but I do wonder whether there are certain things 
Uh, well, I know there are certain things that science can't yet explain. We still don't have a cure for cancer, quite. Although they do seem to be getting pretty close, which is good news. Uh, but, yeah, so much stuff we don't fully understand. Nobody can quite explain what... You know, even basic stuff. What is love? To quote Howard Jones, yeah. No, no scientist can tell you what that is. As far as I can tell, some have come up with formulas, and we've talked about it on the programme before, you know. This plus that plus that gives you butterflies in the stomach because there's not so much blood going there because you're too excited and so on. Uh, but it's not what love is, is it? Now, there's so many unanswered questions. The one I want to discuss, it, if, if anyone listening this morning is, is in this position, is if you have had one of these out-of-body experiences or a near-death experience, how was it for you? 0800 121 80 80. Some quite well documented things on this. Talk of a, a white tunnel, for example. Now, do people who've had these close calls come back and say, oh, yeah, I saw, I saw the white tunnel? I was at the pearly gates, Stu. I don't know. 0800 121 80 80. If it's something you've got experience of. Eight one treble three. Stoke in your message. We can always call you back. Still to come on BBC Radio Stoke. We'll talk more about ambulance response.